My name is Ramsony and welcome back to Slice and Dice 3.0, where it is finally time to run in unfair. In classic mode here. Ooh! Okay, so we get to choose our party layout as well. This is going to give a lot more diversity to the game if the basic game options give you a party layout as well. So we have basic, a spread of all different characters. We have uh, Sisab, which is a spread of all different characters backwards. And then we have Force. Let's take Force. Why? Because it seems unique. I, I don't know, I'm interested. Actually, hang on, we had this in the tutorial as well. Not that I'm mad about it. I'll happily take it again. All right, what do we got going on here? So since we're playing unfair, I need to pick 10 value worth of negatives here. Our characters are Wallop, who has a target ally cannot die this turn. As well as two sides that stun an enemy with equal or lower HP, a two damage self shield and one damage self shield. Defender we've seen many times before, three shield, two shield, one shield, two attacks for one damage. Uh, thief, two damage ranged, two, two damage sides. Ruffian is quite fun. Only has 4 max HP, but has a 5 damage pain side, so if you can defend them, you can get a huge amount of damage out. Also, two signs that do 1 damage, one side that does 1 damage in cleave, and a shield 2. And then Lazy, who has 5 max HP and only two sides. One does 3 damage, one shields for 3. They're pretty effective, though. Okay, so we also have a positive in here, which is Perceptive. Plus 4 to the number of offered items. That seems like that'd be really good. So if I wanted to take Perceptive, I would want to also take something like... What? Third death? Every third dice you use each turn gains death? We could use Wallop theoretically to prevent that. I really don't want every third action to result in death. All heroes set their max HP to four. Don't love that. If I'm entirely honest, none of these characters have anything, well, I guess Wallop, but Wallop has so little max HP that them having a stun enemies with equal or lower HP value than me, and it's not ranged at all, uh, isn't especially important to the degree that I'm kind of working myself up to maybe taking Stony Grasp for all heroes start with Petrified for one, uh, which will knock out all of their available top sides, and then bottom caltrops. Also, all heroes replace their bottom side with one damage, self, and also cantrip. So if they roll into it, they'll deal the damage to themselves. Both of these are going to ask me to be a lot more permissive with what I will accept from a roll. The summoning circle down here. All monsters get plus one pip to all summoning signs. We could get 10 value out of two fewer rerolls. I could just straight up take two fewer rerolls. We just roll every turn and that's what we get. Oh, do I do that? that this seems more survivable, but this, this seems unfair. I get no rerolls. Whatever I roll, that's what I do. Oh boy. Oh boy. We do three damage to the ball this turn. We defend the thief. This is going to be a toughie. Oh, yes. So, thief can. Eh. Am I not targeting the right enemy? Okay, if I'm already selecting that, that's fine. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to use the controls for keyboard a little bit better, because I think that will hasten my play very considerably. Um, I mean, hey, I get to stun you. I don't have to worry about defending, because you're too stunned. Oh boy. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of fights like this. I would love something that allows me to turn my blanks into other effect. It would be very, very useful for us. I did know this was the risk we were taking, though, as we took this challenge. I'm going to 
rise to the occasion. Uh, please don't take into account how uncertain I seem to sound whilst saying so. Well, has a lot of AoE, has one damage to all enemies, as well as two sides that do one damage and cleave. I do like the monk one hell of a lot. I like the nine max health character who has the ability to redirect all damage from enemy effects to an ally, or at an ally, to themselves. Uh, as well as to shield an ally and then do one damage to all things attacking them. I think I need to take some damage, and I think taking my lazy character, who only has two available sides out of six, and upgrading them to Quirl here is going to give us a lot more consistency. And when I can't reroll, consistency is the name of the game. It's a subtitle to Slice and Dice. Okay. I'm more than happy to take out this wolf with the ruffian well defended so they were capable of using their fire damage pain and now if I take out this rat the goblin will flee because it will be alone blessed ring unlocked I love this item blessed ring I've used many 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 times before it replaces the rightmost side with shield one rescue rescue is the keyword that says if this side use sorry if this side saves a hero it can be used again This is a, a, a common uh, combo that I run into, but putting the anchor for turn one, give self-shield two on the ruffian means that on turn one, if we roll into pain, we're capable of hitting the enemy and we still survive. Love it. Ooh, they're all targeting the ruffian. Um, we will be able to save the ruffian by taking out one of the rats. So because I don't have any characters like, uh, obviously I don't have a red character, so I don't have much health upkeep available in this build. Uh, I don't have a blue character, so I don't have the ability to just suddenly generate additional bonuses out of mana, like burst for defend or offense here. So realistically, I mean, the party name was Force. We are trying to rush enemies down. Just get through the fights. So I should always pivot my choices around that. Um, like having a character that's capable of doing four damage to a single target, as well as a character that's capable of doing AoE, like two different characters, in fact, that are capable of doing AoE might be very effective here, just because I'm not capable of re-rolling to find AoE. And four damage is a very important number, especially when we start to meet things like the zombie. Single damage, uh, or single instance of four damage capable of taking a zombie out. We'll take a ranger here again to bolster our ability to hit AoE, even if I don't care about it in this fight. The ranger is also very potent if I hit my ranged engage side immediately. And I do, doing four damage with it. Don't love that we've all been poisoned on turn one, because I'm not certain I can necessarily do enough damage to get past the regeneration of the troll every turn. It's regenerating only by one each turn. But... I'll note, I only did three damage that turn. Things can get pretty slow at that, right? Thank you, Ranger, for consistently hitting your best space. Much appreciated. Uh, the Ruffian is going to be dying. Due to the additional poison, there was no way to prevent that from occurring. And if I don't get four damage this turn, I'm losing the world and the Ranger as well. Oh, I got exactly four damage. One damage on every character. Everyone pitches in. Big Hammer and Twin Daggers. Big Hammer gives us another blank space. I don't really want another blank space, even if I do get a five damage heavy at the same time. It then replaces my middle side. And Twin Daggers. Place the top and bottom side with one damage cantrip. I have no problem with that. It Realistically, it just causes either the ruffian or the defender to do one damage one additional time on a tu single turn, excuse me. Goblin, snake goblin. Ooh. 
you love to see it. You simply love to see it. Turn one kill. Alpha Strike. Win a fight on the turn one. There we go. We unlock Hourglass on uh, the first turn. Plus one pip to all sides. And there was another achievement there. Options, Ledger, most recent. Ah, completed any 20 achievements, so we've unlocked some new characters. I... Ooh, Clumsy and Gardener I've not seen before, but I'm not going to look too deeply at them. I want to save them for later. Getting some serious shields is important, especially in this fight. The slate has giant, giant uh, hits that it throws at characters. That's seven damage in a single instance. And on top of that, we have a militia here who says, if an enemy that I am targeting gains five plus shields, I flee. So I'm going to take the Guardian here as a really good defensive option who's also capable of making the militia f uh, flee. I did not hit the side that's capable of making the militia flee. That's okay, we'll just start working on taking down the slate. We need to do five individual instances of damage because it has stone HP. I think you'll flee anyway, militia. Short sword and lead boots. So, lead boots. Add sticky and plus one pip to all sides. Sticky cannot be re-rolled. Uh, yeah, because that's different to how I was usually handling things. I'm going to take the lead boots. Let's pop those on the ranger, who I suspect in this fight where we can get some AoE out of finding the Slimer. We may find this especially useful. Yeah, something like this. We break down the Slimer until it summons its Slimelet, and then we AoE it for the kill. Hmm. The Guardian also dies if I focus it this turn. Hang on, maybe I'm looking to take out the Ogre instead of the Slimer. Yeah, so now I'll lose the Ranger to the Slimer. And that's only one character that dies. Ooh! I always really, really like having both Armorer and the Lead Boots. I think Armorer and Lead Boots work together really, really well. Because the Armorer's, like, quote-unquote worst side is still at that point 4 damage heavy. And its best side becomes Shield 2 Smith. Smith says target gets plus N to damage and shield sides this turn. It says 1 at the moment, but with the Lead Boots, that says 2. So that's two shield as well as two increase to whatever the other person was going to use. When I have a lot of AoEs, like I do on the Ranger and Whirl, that becomes very, very valuable. Let's drop this Twin Daggers on the Ruffian now and then throw the Lead Boots over to our Armorer. Okay, so Agnes is summoning a Wolf here on the first turn. Githa is trying to weaken three of us. And McGrat is just doing three damage to two of us. Hmm. Unfortunately, the person who is taking the most damage this turn uh, is not on full HP, so the Guardian can't defend them ridiculously. That said, they also don't need to defend them ridiculously, so... Why should I be so sad about that? Uh, Githa... Two damage to the middle enemy when I take away her fourth HP. Which I'm fine to do this turn because the ranger was already fully protected. Had a little bit of excess of armor. Unfortunately, that takes away a lot of our AoE potential with those top lines. Okay, I think the Ruffian just goes down this turn, and I just accept that. I, I That's part of the, the price of doing business. And that's the case, because I want to also be able to take out Agnes. Preventing additional wolf summons, preventing the AoE, which keeps the Armorer alive this turn. Hmm... If only one of you was still on full HP, this would be sick. Let's 
So now the ranger is the only one going down to the wolf here. After depositing additional damage on other targets, and there goes the wolf. We get past that boss fight. Choose an item, the splitting arrows. Replace the two right sides with one damage range cleave, or the hissing ring. Replace the middle side with two damage poison. Two damage poison is extremely good. That said, it's also not reliable. So what if I consider splitting arrows to be a way to cause the Guardian not to be able to roll out? I said that I was going to pick based around consistency, and I think now is the time to do that, especially because gravestones are going to start showing up soon, and as soon as gravestones start showing up, additional instances of one damage in AoE? Incredible. The best thing around. Ain't nothing ever going to keep them down. We get the ranger to strike that militia on the top line, and then... Boom! Take the militia, the sniper, and... Uh, a bones... Uh, militia, sniper, and damage a bones at the same time with the smithed AoE on the guardian there. I don't actually have to sacrifice the ruffian this turn. I could, and it would make the fight a lot easier, but it would make next fight a little harder, so let's see if I can prevent having to do that. These smith scythes from the armorer have been incredible. Okay, we've got the collector and the scrapper. We saw the power of the scrapper in the very first episode, which is making me feel less keen on taking it. And then we have the collector, who has a side on each side of the die. Sounds good to me. Has a two damage growth side, a two damage death wish side. Death wish, of course, saying that it does double the effect if that character is dying that turn. Growth being gained one additional pip for this fight after each usage. Has one damage duplicate, which copies itself into all allied sides this turn. Two damage self shield, one damage cleave, and one damage focus, which doubles the effect if it also targets the previous target or the target of the previous die that turn. Gimme Collector. And now the Twin Daggers are no longer relevant. Um, the Armorer has the most HP. Uh, none of these characters eliminate or anything like that. Yeah, okay, I'll give the Armorer the additional shielding here. Oh, and I'll need it. I do want to let the imp just explode against me. So that I don't have to individually manage that. There we go. Hmm. The whirl is going down this turn. I still think I'm okay with that. I lose the whirl, but I win the fight. Reroll the class of Collector? No, Collector is one of the yellow characters I can rely on at level 2 to have something on all of the available slots. Mini Crossbow! This has been changed! This used to put it on the rightmost side of your die. Being on the top... That doesn't necessarily make it better, that actually makes it worse. Mini Crossbow did used to be very powerful though, so I can understand making it better. <gasps> Ambrosia! Ambrosia's really good. Adds Rescue to the left side, and I'm gonna pop that on the Guardian, who has a Shield 2 Cleave side. Shield 2 Cleave and Rescue all together is exceptionally powerful. You can do some real nutty defending with that. Not that I'll get to do it this turn, despite the fact that I have rolled it. There we go, defended all the incoming damage. I'm gonna wait until I get instances of four damage to try and take out the zombies. Just focus on the Slimer at the moment. Hmm. 
Okay, I'm making my way through the fight. I'm very glad that neither of the zombies uh, rolled poison last turn, and that only one of them rolled poison on the first turn. But as soon as I said that, they started to get a little bit more active here. Yeah, this poison is going to be a problem. Again, because I don't have a red character, I don't really have ways of managing this. One way to manage poison in a situation where I don't have a red character could have been using, uh, what's it called? Uh, the monk, who on the leftmost side had a shield to cleanse side. Guardian, here's something. So it's not relevant this turn, but both of these characters on top can be saved with a single shield to cleave. And because rescue allows me to reuse the side, I can shield the ranger, saving the collector, and then the collector saving the world, giving me a lot more shielding than if I just initially shielded the top side. So much shield. I mean, technically that's four damage, just not in a single instance. And I now have to roll luckily to win this fight. I need to roll damage twice. That's once. Didn't roll damage, but I do fully self-defend. If the enemy poisons me, then I'm on a clock. That's poison, baby. That's the damage! Got him! <laughs> I'm a survivor, I'm not gonna give up. Survivor. Win a fight with only one surviving hero. It gives you the item Candle, which adds Vigil to all sides. The Vigil keyword says plus one pip for each defeated ally. Barbarian and Venom. I gotta say, I really do like Venom because it is a lot of control over boss battles. Venom's capable of attacking at range, which means they're capable of poisoning Hexia without triggering Hexia's knockback effects. Uh, the poison itself is a great strategy for surviving a long fight. Ugh, I'm not gonna have a long fight though. I can't really survive long fights. I'm taking the Barbarian. Barbarian has on their leftmost side 10 damage death. I die. So we'll be looking for uh, upgrades on our grey characters that are capable of possibly preventing that. Also have two signs that does two damage in bloodlust, plus one pit for each damage enemy, and then an eight damage pain, six damage pain, and a four damage pain. Again, consistency. It's worth noting that Venom does have a heal three cleanse side, which would be nice, but I also do need my rogue to do a lot of damage if I want to push through enemies in an appropriate fashion. Uh, and the final side of the Venom here is 1 damage Poison Plague. Plague is increased by plus 1 pip for all poison on all characters. Let's take this Barbarian and then go through the fight. The Barbarian should certainly be the person holding the self shield on turn 1 as well. I could see a world where the Collector takes the lead boots instead of the Armorer. Especially in this fight. Unfortunately, the Rotten has hit us with one damage Poison Cleave on the first turn, which is pretty bad in this instance, uh, because of the whole, um, uh, the, the, the fact that none of my characters have a lot of HP, and I'm not going to be able to heal additional HP, so that just put me on a really quick clock, basically. I'm going to take out all of the bones this turn, so it's just the damage of the Rotten that's coming in through to my characters. I'm going to be losing the Ranger this turn. There's literally no way for me to stop that happening. The enemy is summoning an Imp. Nothing I get to do about that.
Way more poison. And the imp is trying to die as well. Uh, I can save my characters from the imp. The collector is dying anyway this turn. But if I don't save the barbarian, I will have no damage for the rest of the fight. I don't really get a choice on that one. Oh, please! Only two of the sides of the rotten are poison, but you wouldn't know it to look at them. Okay, here we go. I need one damage next turn. One singular point of damage. Otherwise, I'm already dead because I have no protection against the poison. There it is. Guardian Goddess. Coming in clutch. Sparks. Adds cantrip to all sides with exactly one pip. Armor up? Also, water. Plus one, negative one. Plus one, negative one. Change the entire middle row. Unfortunately, I can't put three items on a single character, which makes that a little less valuable here. Yeah, it's pretty good on the collector still. I'm gonna take Sparks. I want the armorer giving out additional smiths. I want the armorer to smith themselves with cantrip and then have to smith someone else. Ah, here's a great opportunity to show the effect of the, the cascade. Uh, I'm going to save the collector while failing to save all these other characters. Boom. And in fact, I've already got more than enough defense. I'm gonna try and keep the Barbarian alive for this fight. It'd be really nice if I could. I'd like to have your full HP bar in the next fight, please. And it's not like I'm gonna heal back up to that point. Hey, the armor did it! They smithed themselves! So now their smith side is even larger to go on someone else. Uh, should certainly go on AoE here. And in fact, with the Ranger and Collector taking down the snake first, I'm capable of taking all enemies here. Victory plus plus unlocks a mode loot. Hell yeah, a love loot mode. Valkyrie! Yes, that's who I was looking for. When I mentioned that I wanted an upgrade to my uh, Grey Heroes, to my level three character that might be able to stop death, I couldn't have been thinking of anyone except for the Valkyrie. Why? Because the Valkyrie has two sides that say target ally cannot die this turn. Put that on the Barbarian and they are capable of terrible, terrible things. Let's go Valkyrie! Unfortunately this does mean I lose my innate Ambrosia synergy, but hopefully the Armorer will upgrade to someone who is also pretty happy to use Ambrosia. additional range cleave sides here and then give it no I'll give them the range cleave sides I'm just not going to give them the the cantrip I was thinking about trying to give them the cantrip because then it means if they roll any of their range cleave sides which you know five out of six of the time they're doing they are going to hit the hydra at least once and then the second hit is the actual usage of the side and then I only need to hit the Hydra three more times in that turn in order for it to die. But three more times with two other yellow characters and a gray character, not especially likely. Or at least not guaranteed. I would like it to be guaranteed. Unfortunately, the Alpha here has decided immediately to summon another wolf. That's not exactly what I was looking for, to be frank.
But it is what's happening, as I am capable of getting them to one HP away from <laughs> dead. Oh my god, they're going for another one. Definitely gonna just continue working on the Hydra here. I don't expect I'm gonna be taking down the Hydra with five instances of damage, so I need to be within range of just knocking it out in a single turn. Yes! Oh, yes, this is great! Valkyrie. So, the Valkyrie's leftmost side is four damage Death Wish, which means, again, it does double damage if the Valkyrie is dying this turn, or does double its effect. And I also gave it Ambrosia, so now it has Rescue. This side can be used again if it saves a hero. So I can save the wolf, or rather, I can save the barbarian from dying to the wolf, and then keep my eight damage blade to throw again at the Hydra. Ogre blood. Adds bloodlust to the middle side. Plus one pip for each damaged enemy. I really like that on the Valkyrie, because the middle side is shield to rescue. So you can do a lot of shenanigans with that. Demon Claw adds Rampage and plus one, sorry, and negative one pip to the left side. There is a world where I could have a Barbarian who's not capable of dying, but that requires the Barbarian to roll a one in six and then the Valkyrie to roll a one in three at the same time. But a Barbarian that's not capable of dying just cutting through the entire enemy team with the Demon Claw, that'd be fun. I do think putting the Yoga Blood on the Valkyrie for more defensive options makes a lot more sense in this run where I am uh, deprived of healing options. Oh, this is great. Give some additional shielding to the Ranger. And I'll take out the Bandit directly. Troll's only going to have 2 HP next turn, but I've also got a lot of weakened characters and now some petrified sides, courtesy of hitting the Basilisk. Oh, Valkyrie! Coming in clutch, saves the Ranger, saves the Barbarian. Barbarian throws out another strike with a Basilisk, gets saved again? Um... That's actually really cool, because now the Valkyrie is still capable of using the die, which means I can use the Collector's 2 damage duplicate side to create enough sides to take out the Basilisk. Topsy-turvy, replace all sides with the hero above's base sides. So the reason for someone to do this is if the individual characteristics of a character like i can't imagine their spell oh some some characters like green characters have traits instead of spells or tactics uh so you might want to change the combinations thereof you could also give you know uh, you could give sides that usually wouldn't appear on a yellow character to a yellow character because they're inherited from a gray character so you can affect it with different items like items that can only go on yellow characters i'm thinking of the yellow standard specifically this doesn't have much effect for us at the moment and i don't think it will overall dancer and stoic that's an interesting one stoic so the stoic has 15 max hp great the Stoic also has, on the leftmost side, stun an enemy with equal or less HP than me. I can give that rescue. I like it. We've also got the Dancer. Realistically, I'm not taking the Dancer. Why I'm not taking the Dancer? Because I don't have any rerolls. The Dancer has cantrip sides and would really benefit from being able to reroll. I'm taking the Stoic. 
Who's wearing my lead boots at the moment? The lead boots go on the stoic. No, the collector really wants the lead boots right now. Let's go, Tarantus. You're summoning two additional spiders this turn, I see. Let me get the barbarian to smack on the top line up. Ranger to split some damage, and then we'll duplicate three total damage on the Tarantus. I took two damage on my Barbarian. The enemy now has one fewer spiders than they had last time. Yeah. That's progress. I can't just do ten damage with the Barbarian on the top line, right? Or can I? Because Tarantus says kill the topmost enemy when you take away the 10th HP of Tarantus. And the Barbarian is dying to their own death side. I do both of those at the same time. They cancel one another out and then the Valkyrie revives them. Welcome back, Barbarian. Yes, Tarantus may have more spiders on the board right now and they've all rolled poison. But it'll be okay. Three more enemies can be taken out with these duplicate sides, and now it's just two spiders versus the rest of our team. Cheat death. Win the Tarantus fight with no dead heroes. Uh, gives us the six, uh, sixth tier? I'll say tier. Sixth tier item. Determination. On the first turn, you cannot die. Sushi. Replace the leftmost side with gain two rerolls cantrip. No, 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 uh, no thank you. Prism. Add rainbow to the middle side. So rainbow is an additional keyword, and then rainbow, the keyword also says, plus one pip for each keyword on this side. For instance, Valkyrie currently has shield two, rescue, bloodlust. If I gave this to her, she would have shield two, rescue, bloodlust, rainbow, that's three keywords, so it's shield five. If the collector had this, Then the two damage duplicate side, two damage duplicate sticky rather, becomes five damage duplicate sticky rainbow. That's good. That's just a lot of damage. Spiker, Fnatic, and Core all doing their best, which is to say a lot of damage. Oh, and we get it. We get the combo. What's the combo? Uh, it's that the Stoic has the stun an enemy that has equal or less HP than me, and it's a rescue side. So I'm going to stun the core and then get to do this again. And I'm not going to stun the Fnatic because the Fnatic attacking is actually really important. And the Fnatic's attacking the Valkyrie. Yeah, the Valkyrie is happy to be on low health because, again, she has the Death Wish side. The Valkyrie literally has a Death Wish. I'm setting the enemies to specific values here because I know I have AoE availability, so the Fnatic should easily die next turn without me really needing to invest much. Oh, the Valkyrie's Bloodlust side is still really good. Shield 5 rescue. Big shield for both the Barbarian and Ranger. And then 
take out the spiker on the top lane. Do a whole mess of damage to the core and then watch it run. Choose a blessing. Keep rolls, keep unused rolls. What unused rolls? <laughs> Add barrel. Add a barrel to each fight. A barrel is an enemy that has six HP and when it dies, it does five damage to adjacent allies upon death. Uh, depending on where the barrel goes, like if it's in between two zombies here, great. If it's at the bottom of the map, what, I'm doing six damage to this so I can do five damage to someone else? That said, it is another character on the field for the sake of blood loss as well. No, it is at the very top. Of course it is. I should have known that was going to be the case. The Centric only has sides on half of their die. So I'm going to take the Assassin instead. The Assassin also has three sides that are capable of immediately taking out a zombie, which is a non-zero amount of the reason that I want to take him here. Unfortunately, my Sparks, my cantrip for all sides with exactly one pip, is not doing great right here. There's a world in which I could put that on the Collector, because the Collector does have one damage duplicate cantrips. Or they are one damage, so they can become cantrips before I give them the lead boots as well. Yeah, before I give them the lead boots, eh? Hey, see? And this leaves us with the Valkyrie's giant shield again. Sure. Ooh, Valkyrie's giant shield isn't going to do well this turn, but defending the Barbarian from death will. Okay. I'm looking to prevent poison if possible here. Yeah? Let's actually also just take out the basilisk. No more poison. <laughs> uh, 25 achievements. Uh, you complete any 25 achievements and we've unlocked 10 monsters. I have never seen these portraits before. Log. Rolls away if only logs remain on the field. Shade. Becomes immune to damage this turn for each of its HP points. There's Carrier. Starts poisoned for two. That's a lot of damage a Carrier can do. Golem starts with eight shields. Unused shields are retained and has steel sides to damage us with. Fountain, each, its HP, each of its HP gives us one mana when we take it away, has six max HP. Warchief, we've seen this before. Uh, all monsters get plus one pip to all sides while the Warchief is alive. Blind, at the end of the turn, if no damage was dealt to any monster, I flee. And <laughs> it does AoE attacks. Uh... I'm going to quickly go back to that, because I was really enjoying looking at them, even if they're a little spoilery. Chomp. 10 HP. Uh, the inner five. So it has five points of its HP do one damage to the bottommost enemy, and five points of its HP do one damage to the topmost enemy. Sarcophagus is a new boss, 15 max HP. Has some three damage cleave sides, seven damage heavy sides, summon two spiders, summon two bones. Uh, I flee at the end of the turn, at the end of turn three rather, and drop a tier three to five item if defeated. And must, has some stone HP that needs to be removed individually, and then a bee, a small creature. Cool. And then on top of that, we also have all two, roll two on all sides, get the twisted bar item, a seventh tier item that sets all sides to two. And of course, that happened because we rolled the collector's two damage duplicate cantrip sticky side.
I can hit the back line if I use that barrel. We blow up the barrel next to the sniper in order to take them out. <laughs> and we manage to take out the enemy with the collector's duplicate side. Because if the collector rolls this two damage duplicate cantrip sticky side, I believe everyone, because of the duplication, rolls that and it's cantrip. So all of them just send that damage out. Ooh, hello. We now see some of these new enemies. Shade, five max HP, has all eliminate sides. So we'll always target the enemy with the lowest HP. So the collector in this instance. And then two chomps who have five damage, five damage, seven damage side, a seven damage side, a four damage side, four damage side. Okay, much more simple. Angel Feather and Time Stone. So Time Stone's significantly less useful. The cantrip in general is significantly less useful when you don't have any rerolls because the big thing is Cantrip activates on reroll. Uh, Angel Feather, though, at rescue to the top and bottom sides. Who might want that? Let me stroke my chin for a mere minute while I think about it. The Valkyrie. Rescue says it can only use again if it saves a hero. Uh, target ally cannot die this turn is nothing unless it saves a hero. Sounds good to me. Perfect. Valkyrie, save the collector. Assassin, dodge. Do I want the stoke to take all the damage away from the collector? Honestly, probably not. I'm gonna just get a bunch of damage on these shades because they seem like the least manageable part where in next turn they are going to exclusively attack the collector because they only attack with eliminate in mind. Ooh, but the collector has also rolled their death wish side so it makes me more powerful. Barbarians capable of doing some great damage there, taking out one of the chomps. Stoic self defense. We only actually end up taking one damage out of this turn. No, oh, no, it's going pretty well. All four? Hello. Roll four on all sides. Also an achievement, but it doesn't come with an unlock because it's not a very common achievement uh, unlock to uh, achieve. Look, that was apparently a sentence. I tried. That doesn't mean it worked. Unfortunately, I'm not capable of keeping the Valkyrie alive this turn. 25 deaths, that said, seems pretty good to me. 25 deaths. Unlocks an item, early grave. Adds pain and cantrip to all sides with three or more pips. Oh boy. Veteran and brawler. So veteran's certainly the most consistent here. Just rolling two sides that do th uh, four damage, two sides that do three damage, and two sides that shield for three. The brawler has more interesting sides, but... Did I say that I need interesting? I'm also literally up against the dragon right now, so I should probably think what's good for the dragon. Realistically, what's good for the dragon? What's good for the gander? Uh, no, what's good for... Honestly, the collector might be better than either of these. Specifically for the fact that the Collector is capable of giving this uh, duplicate can uh, cantrip rainbow effect. And 
That said, I could also see giving the prism to the assassin so that I'm capable of poisoning for four. I'm I'm actually just going to take the veteran. I want some I want some very very basic bland results. Unfortunately, no one has one pip sides anymore, so nothing is going to be activated by sparks. Unless I gave someone the splitting arrows and then activated them, but that seems very close to, if not exactly equal to, useless. Let's do this. No! The dragon is poisoning on turn one! It's exactly what you don't want to see. It's exactly it. If there's anything that you don't want to see, it would be something like that. Um. Boy, that's. discouraging. I'd love to be able to take out the call this turn. Oh, hang on. Uh, yeah, I can. I just have to exclusively focus on that and do nothing else. Stoic, defend thyself. I can't get six poison on you. Well, unless I need to keep the assassin enough that the Stoic should draw the poison away from the assassin. The Stoic definitely dies next turn if I do that, whereas the Assassin also definitely dies next turn if I don't, so... Well... That's poison, baby! Green blood? Have 5 plus poison on a single ally. Unlocks an item wine. <laughs> there used to be a version of this that was 1, uh, tier 1, and you would start poison, and the enemy with the highest HP would start poisoned. Uh, but now it's all monsters. Cool. Valkyrie will be able to revive the Stoic, possibly. Oh, I love this turn. Ish. Uh, the dragon is exclusively attacking the assassin who rolled a dodge. So we basically get a free round here. Unfortunately, I'm capable of doing six damage on my free round. And also the enemy kills my Stoic and does a bunch of damage to my veteran on the free round. Come on, dodge again. Okay, can I get you to half HP this turn? New. But I can't get the Stoic back. And then I lose the Veteran and the Assassin. Valkyrie, can you roll the Revival again this turn, please? Didn't roll Revival. And I can't stun you. But the dragon is now on half HP. So there's that. Mm. I'm going to have to sacrifice the Stoic so the Barbarian can stick around to try and do some damage here. Stoic leaps in front of the blade for the Barbarian. I was about to say, if I got the Death Wish side as well as a big hit for the uh, Barbarian, we would actually be able to take out the enemy right now. I think I need to do that damage. And now I rely on the Valkyrie either rolling my Death Wish side and taking out the enemy, or reviving other allies. DEATH WISH! <laughs> yeah! Unfair? What of it? That's a classic unfair victory right there. I say classic like I've ever done it before. <laughs> uh, what are we looking at here for Achievos? Complete any mode on unfair or harder unlocks a difficulty brutal. 
30 achievements. Also unlocks an additional nine heroes for us. Pilgrim that I haven't seen before. Agent that I haven't seen before. My God, there's so many new classes. Wanderer that is new. Wanderer seems completely different. I'm not going to look too closely at any of them, because as far as I'm concerned, uh, until I encounter them in run, they're a little bit spoilery. And also, I don't want the information-dense version of having to sit here and read sides for five minutes, especially at the culmination of such an incredible run. For the moment, let me just say that my name is in Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slice and Dice. In the top left is a series playlist for all my content on the game past, present, and future. YouTube recommendations down below. Streaming past are the names of the people so generously supporting the Republic on Patreon.com slash RhapsodyPlays at or above the thank dear, and a special thanks this episode to Dyla. Hopefully you all have been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you all next time.